quick little review on the Pioneer GM D705 all class D 5 channel so I was going through uh, the specs online on the website which I'll give you a link to and um, they they use the terms a slash B to describe the four channels uh, which is a little confusing because I thought maybe channels one through four were class AB which you see that a lot is like channels one through four will be class a, a, a B and then the class D channel will be uh, class, or I'm sorry the fifth channel will be class D so not in the case of this thing is very compact it's fused at 90 amps uh, it does about um, real world is probably right around 1100 watts total uh, it's CEA rated or at least <laughs> I saw the description the description shows that it's C only the base channel is CEA rated which is 600 watts RMS at 2 ohm uh, but basically all the channels are 2 ohm and uh, I think it does 75 watts in the the four channel version uh, at four ohms and then 100 watts at two ohms which is typically about right you should get you should get about 85 watts whether it's four ohm or two ohm uh, per speaker which is plenty um, the other thing I really liked about this was uh, well one of the I, I guess one of the issues that I saw was price so uh, Pioneer wants about four hundred dollars for this which is I think is too expensive but um, they're on Amazon the lowest one that I found I think was probably a used one was 235 uh, this one's actually for sale. Uh, we got a mix up or something like that, and somebody sent us one. They weren't supposed to send us one, and uh, they don't want it back, so we're just going to sell it. Uh, 200 bucks shipped. Uh, and then what I'll do is uh, anything where I, because I, 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 I didn't want to turn this into like QVC, but you guys seem to really respond to it. Basically, like a, a YouTube version of QVC. Um, but um, yeah, th I'll, what I'll do is I'll change the in the title. I'll put sold when it's sold. So, but this thing comes with the base knob manual. It's all brand new. Um, and you can see here what they did on the transfer, the input transformer. Uh, let's see. It looks like it uses multiple rail voltages. I don't see the outputs. Ah, okay, so there's one and then there's another one. Um, so it, yes, it uses two different rails. And then here's the output section for the uh, class D uh, for the base. And then here's the, the four uh, output inductors for the class AB. I'm sorry, for the four channel section. The other thing that I thought was kind of weird was that you typically they do them in pairs, but they might do like a triple uh, just for the uh, the base output. Um, let me see, they probably, uh, they can also do them in uh, uh, odd numbers if, if they're all in parallel, as far as like these would all be power supply. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and typically in this package size, TO220 is, it used to be that they were good for like 100 watts each that and then like companies like PPI and Orion would only use them for about 50 watts each that way they were nice and conservative on it everything ran clean there's plenty of uh, heat sink and all that kind of stuff but uh, as you've seen in the Brazilian what they do is they just use a higher uh, voltage device and instead of running a rail voltage of anywhere from 30 to 40 volts they run a really high rail voltage of like 200 and the device is good for 250 so but um, uh, I don't know that much about it to tell you what's in this thing, but um, this is probably, yeah, that's what it was. This is probably one, two, three, four for the uh, highs. And then this is a rectifier. Uh, this is for the uh, base, or no, this is for the input power supply. And then this might be for the, just for the class D, which is 600 watts. And then the rectifier is there. But other than that, it looks pretty clean. It's very compact, uses DSM. And uh, not that DSM is any better because it also uses through hole, but uh, DSM is a money saver, time saver, uh, and that's why they that's why they use it. And also the components are cheaper. So this little resistor is cheaper than say this resistor. So, but um, other than that, I think the only thing I could complain about too was that the the base boost is centered at 50 hertz, which I'm not a fan of. I think it should be right around 35 or 40. Uh, Fosgate for years used uh, 45 hertz, which I think they still do. Uh, and then a PPI sort of came in and swooped up underneath them. Uh, they had a programmable um, parametric EQ that they used buttons on. I had a, a PPI PC2150 the other day. It went quick. I didn't even have to post it and somebody bought it. But um, I remember the Q selection and you could, depending on which button was in or out, you could do like 36 hertz, 40 hertz, 44 hertz. And then I think there was one other option as well. So, but this one is centered at... Uh, 50 hertz, as you can see, it has high level input, which is nice for OEM integration. Uh, and then it's got a lot of really good controls for high pass, low pass, also for input selection. Uh, I just use the two channel um, 
I don't think the two channel, yeah, it didn't go over to, yeah, there we go. So you can switch this to AB, which again is not uh, class AB, it's channels A and B. Uh, if you switch that over to that and then you can do, use uh, two inputs to power the whole thing if you want. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's really good uh, as far as, um, I mean, you would hope that a uh, giant uh, con international conglomerate could get their shit together and, and, and make a pretty good amp, and they do. Um, only on the base versions, which um, there were there were typically two base versions um, that I've seen in, uh, fail in the last couple of years, but they've had this style for about uh, about ten years. Uh, the sort of you know just plain uh, classic look, I guess you could call it, uh, and that was the uh, the one that's fused for two. Uh, it's two forty amp fuses, which is eighty amp, and then they have another one that's fused for one hundred twenty. Both of those had problems. Um, they just weren't going through the uh, wave solder machine uh, correctly and they were getting some fractures and then like they would stop working and things like that. So, um, which isn't, uh, it's so lame for something like that to happen just because it's so expensive to then, uh, you know, refund everybody or, you know, get returns and things like that. But uh, try to stay away from those. Uh, this one, I don't know about. So you look on the line for reviews. Uh, I just wanted to give you guys a brand new uh, amplifier and a pretty good review on this guy. Um, as far as Pioneer, like I said, uh, at $400, I don't think this is a good value, but at $200, I think it's a, a really good deal. Uh, again, the channels are all 2 ohm stable, uh, not 1 ohm stable on the base amp. And I'm going to do the review here real quick on the, the new uh, RED series from uh, Recoil, the RED 1800.5. So, love you guys. Thank you for watching.